context, a former convict who returned to court to thank his judge, plus a multimillionaire who's giving ex-offenders a second chance. I'm Lorna Duick. You're watching Context, the show that looks at life beyond the headlines. He breathed the most fire on CBC's Dragon's Den. Because it doesn't make any money, I'm out. But on his new show, Redemption Inc., Kevin O'Leary offers 10 ex-convicts a second chance, showing there is a softer side to him. Well, maybe. Out with it. Redemption, let's put it in context. I'll ask Kevin O'Leary why he wants to help ex-cons and what redemption means to him. But first, an Ontario man who spent years in and out of jail, Maxwell Beach, has a remarkable story of second chances. Maxwell, welcome to Context. Thanks great for to have you me. here. Listen, it wasn't enough for you to have a great family and all of that that went with it. Why not? Growing up in a rather strict uh, household. Um, I lived, I would say, more or less a sheltered lifestyle. Your dad was a minister. He was a minister, and uh, my mom was greatly involved in church and missionary work and things of that nature. And so coming up, uh, not being able to go to the movies, uh, be in tune with what's going on, I became very curious at a young age to find out really what's out there and what the world has to offer. You start stealing, you move out by 15, it ramps you up to a flat-out life of crime. Uh, tell us about going to jail for the first time. Going to the jail for the first time as a young offender, I was probably around 15, 16 years of age. And what I had observed on TV was contrary to my experience. And so I didn't think that jail was anything, you know, like to worry about. But you reoffend, and you reoffend again yes. and again. Yeah. And now you're facing something really serious. Have you gotten scared yet? No. The adult system was very similar. You're inside, you go in your cell, you're served food. Um, there's three stages. There's young offenders, there's adult, and then when you graduate from the adult system, from jail to penitentiary, that's where you really see the difference. Okay, you were at that stage. You yes. haven't been rehabilitated. You've been in and out of jail since yeah. you're 15. Nothing's working on changing your ways. Tell me about this last time. You're waiting to get sentenced by a judge. Yes. Now, this last time, I was on some pretty serious charges, uh, weapons-related, narcotics-related offenses, and I was looking at an extensive period of time. Incredibly. Yes. That sentencing gets delayed, not once, Four times, they lose your paper, the judge is sick one yeah. day. And in the midst of all those four waitings, you, I understand, felt a different judge weighing in on you. You felt you had to do some time with God. What happened? I had been on bail for approximately a year or so, uh, going back and forth to court. Uh, my sister, Joanne, had been on me. I come to church, come to church, come to church. I was on, on bail at the time, pretty much on house arrest. I was on some pretty strict conditions. Uh, at the time, I had a son. His name was Emmanuel. And he was about uh, a month old. And I was just there at home with him. And she was always constantly on me, come to church, come to church. And so I started to come to church. And as Emmanuel grew, I remember holding him in my arms and just looking at him, wondering, you know, are you going to raise this boy, you know, to live a similar lifestyle like yourself? And I started to think. And being brought up in the church, these things are rooted within you. Although my lifestyle definitely demonstrated I had no knowledge of Jesus Christ, it was rooted deep within me. And what did you think that was asking you to do? While the um, sermon was being preached in the middle of church, I almost collapsed right at the altar. I had my son in my hands. Uh, somebody came and took him from me, and I just uh, fell right there at the altar in the midst of service. I remember just crying out to the Lord, God, I'm sorry. I need you. I'm lost without you. I beg your forgiveness. I'm ready to surrender. I mean, I just become like a little child, bawling, helpless. And uh, I just remember pouring out my heart to him. And a gentleman came to me and said, would you like to be baptized? And I told him to heat up the water. 
<laughs> okay, and within a very short time, you're in front of the earthly judge. Yes. And you asked that guy for mercy also. And yes. what did he do? I had not been straight with the judge uh, in regards to custody of my son, Emmanuel, and had not told him about the sentence that was hanging over my head. The judge said to me, Maxwell, you haven't been straight with me. Regardless, I still feel that Emmanuel will be better off in your care. This is all after I'd been baptized. So that was a miracle in itself, knowing that I have all these years. You got the most amazing second chance from that judge. Absolutely. 90 days served on weekends Absolutely. only. Absolutely. Seven years later, you bump into that judge who gave you your second chance. I've been searching for this judge for years just to tell him thanks, you know, for basically saving two lives. When I came to the court, he didn't recognize me, and when I had spoke to him about the time of sentencing and the events that had taken place in the courtroom that day, because I was really, really shook up. I had become a new man. I was like, just totally changed. So he remembered. It was a day that he would never forget. And so when I had brought up uh, what had taken place, he said to me, I remember you, I remember. And then I would started to tell him, you know, you don't understand the impact that you've had on my life. My son, uh, Emmanuel, at the time, both myself and his mother, uh, we were kind of neither here nor there. And so with uh, young parents, you know, who weren't really ready to be parents, who knows what would have happened if I'd been sentenced five or six years. And I just let him know, yeah, that, you know, yeah. he, he had a hand in saving two lives. Okay, Maxwell, we're going to bring you back at the end of the show and um, give you some, some time to think about the other paths to redemption uh, with our next guest that's coming up. But now we want to find out what you in the audience think. Give us a vote. We want to know, would you give a convict a second chance? Yes or no? You can call us at 1-800-215-4913 or send us an email at contextwithlorna.com. We'll have studio audiences in a few moments. But first, Kevin O'Leary on the surprising premise of his new show, Redemption Inc. One of my family members spent time in prison. I know the devastation it created in his life. And I want to help somebody just like him. Before the break, we asked our live studio audience, would you personally give an ex-convict a second chance? And here's how they voted. What a great studio audience we've got. Everybody's got a great soft heart. Now, why would a very rich man want to invest his money $100,000 and his reputation in former drug dealers, bank robbers, and other ex-convicts. Kevin O'Leary joins us to talk about his new reality series, Redemption, Inc. on CBC. Let's welcome Kevin O'Leary. Thank you very much. You're serious about this. You want to make this a worldwide franchise to encourage people to give ex-cons a second chance. Why? Well, I think the problem I'm going to describe to you that we have here in Canada is actually a problem everywhere in the world, and it's very simple. I'd always made the assumption as a taxpayer and as a Canadian citizen that if you breach the law, if you break the law and you are caught and you are tried um, and you get a sentence, you go to prison, you serve your time, you've paid back your debt to society. I always assumed that when you came out of prison that you are rebooted like a computer. You can go back to work, you can reestablish your life the way it used to be, and you can become a contributing taxpayer and raise your family. That's not what happens. Uh, what I didn't realize, and what got me so interested in this cause and got me involved in the show, is that something unique happens to you when you get a federal record or any criminal record. You become a pariah to society. You're tainted. You're radioactive. Not for a period of time, forever. So think about this problem. It doesn't matter what the crime is. If you end up with a record, you come out, put your resume in front of an employer, time to get a job again. They do a background check. They never call you back. And you, this, you've called this the greatest challenge of your career, to change that impression in culture. I'm trying to be pragmatic here, because let me give you the economics of this problem. As we debate it in Canada today with the new crime bill, we're talking about the cost of incarcerating a woman in this country. This is not my data. This just came from the government in the last few weeks. Over $350,000 a year to keep a woman in prison for 12 months. That's an insane waste of money. 
it's insane. You don't agree with the get tough on crime legislation coming No, down. I don't. Not unless it's encompassed around some form of, re re some way to, to help these people in prison during the period they're there, because I don't want them back when they come out. You have to rehabilitate them when they're there. And they're not doing that, so just throwing more money and incarcerating people for a longer period of time, it, it seems insane to me, because it's so expensive. You're putting your own money behind putting this message out on television. You're a third owner in it. How do you feel if this series loses you money? That could very well happen. I take risks all the time as an investor. But I have an intuitive feeling that A, it's good television, and B, it's a very good social cause. I'm throwing a challenge out to corporate Canada. To, to, it's very simple. Look at these people in the context of what they're willing to do. This is not a charity. I'm not asking for to give money away to people. I'm saying let them work, let them pay tax, let them show what they can do, because let me ask you a question. Let's just think about this. Let's say you're a drug dealer. I don't agree on dealing drugs. I don't take drugs. But let's say you're a successful drug dealer running a $100 million franchise. You've got logistics. You've got trucks. You've got salespeople. You've got cost of goods. You've got receivables. You're running a business. Now, why can't we just take that person and say, that business is the wrong one to run? Why don't you try running, running one on the right side of the law? That's my premise, and that's what we challenge, and that's what we try and do and show in Redemption, Inc. You watch tonight's episode or any episode, you'll see that these are great entrepreneurs. Seven out of ten of those great entrepreneurs on your show are, have done time for drug running. Do you think we should legalize marijuana in Canada and get the tax benefit? I don't get my, myself mired into that debate because you can never win it. I don't approve of drugs personally, but I say this. After you've been caught, with, with whatever drug it is. I don't care if it's marijuana or cocaine or whatever drug that's illegal. You know, we set laws in this country, we vote on them, we, we have a democratic system. Whatever society says is illegal is illegal. And when you break the law, you go to jail. I understand all that. My problem is after you come out, it's not fair. It's not right to say to somebody, you can never support your family, you can never get a job. I, I talked to a woman recently who wasn't even allowed to go back to her cupcake bake fair at her high school because the rest of the parents said you were in jail once. <clears throat> that's outrageous and that's wrong and that's un-Canadian and I don't like it. Even though this person is now employed again. We cannot all do reality television shows like you've done. We've got some great people in the studio audience. Uh, we're, looks like we're just weeks away from walking away from giving second chances. We're going to be you know, instituting mandatory minimums. What does the rest of Canada do about this problem? Well, I think what we're trying to do here, and I applaud the CBC for this, is make this an issue. I think we need to debate it more. I am not saying that laws are wrong or right. I'm saying let's debate them and let's have a healthy dis discussion because as a taxpayer, I am offended to spend $360,000 reincarcerating a woman who was never given a chance to get a job because she can last about 24 months before she has to go back into the life of crime to raise some money and support her family if we won't employ her. It's broken. The model's broken. All I'm saying is, why would I want to spend billions of dollars throwing people back in jail that don't want to be there and they've already served their time once? You were in jail for one night. I... And I'm not going back, I can tell you. <laughs> that, that was not a pleasant experience. And I think if we threw every child in there for one night like I was, you would never commit a crime. It's hell on earth. It is Dante's hell. It's awful. Okay, we're going to come back. We're going to uh, talk to this, some ex-cons in the audience, and we're going to talk to some friends of yours actually from Redemption, Inc. I'm going to ask if being on your show has improved their life. Okay, those stories when we come back, and uh, we'll hear more from Kevin shortly. A couple of years ago, I hired an ex-con as my assistant. He'd done time for murder. Find that story as a web exclusive at Context with LornaDuick.com. We'll have more with Kevin O'Leary right after the break. These people have real abilities. They just proved them on the wrong side of the law. And now that's cost them immensely. They can't borrow money, they can't start a business. They're pariahs to society. I want to change all that. I'm taking lots of risk and I want this to work. That's my money and somebody's going to get it. Don't screw this up. Well, I'm talking to Kevin O'Leary today about that new show of his, Redemption, Inc. And uh, Kevin, thank you. It's just fun to have you here. But before we continue our conversation, I want to actually go to the guys 
who were on your show, and Joseph and Adam, thank you very much for joining in on the Facebook campaign here and uh, coming in. Joseph, on a thank scale you. of one to 10, how significant in improving your life was Kevin's show, Redemption Inc.? 10, absolutely. Why? Uh, not just the fun factor, of, not just the fun factor of everything, but uh, just the experience in itself. How many times do you get to meet someone like Mr. O'Leary? And are you working now? Are you allowed to say? Yes. Are you still under? Yeah. No, I'm. I'm working and doing my thing. I'm doing antiques, and it. I've been able to put my prices up a little bit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go to Adam. Adam, you were actually a prison guard. You were a correctional officer living on the right side of the law. You slipped into marijuana growing, mm -hmm. and it just went downhill from there. Adam, on a scale of 1 to 10, what has it meant to be on Kevin's show for improving your life? If 10 is great, 1 was eh. I think it's, uh, it's, it's 9 and a half. Just with my ex, it caused some problems. You know, advertising, what has happened, and stuff like that. Because not a lot of people knew what had happened to me, but... Uh, it's a hundred percent uh, positive thing, though. It's been great. Uh, I got people coming into like my thing was I had an existing business that was to be expanded. So now being on the show, I have all these people coming in. So hey, hey how's Kevin? Is he really mean? And you know all this yeah, stuff like that. You know, that so it brings a lot of exposure to what I had. Some people on the show had businesses. Some uh, yeah. didn't have business, and they had an idea. Okay, Adam, thank you very much. Kevin, you know, one out of three Canadians watch you regularly on Dragon's Den and all the other business stuff. Are you not... How do you wear that mantle of you've got to be the godfather for these, this whole hope for redemption? I just think it, it's a very pragmatic and uh, important uh, dialogue that we have to have as Canadians. And I think, you know, the magic of television is you can combine entertainment. Almost a million people watched the first show, so we had a huge audience. That's very rare for yeah, a new show. Huge. And, and so and immediately it sparked a debate. I knew that was going to happen because I'd road tested some of the footage in London, Ontario, about a month before to a room of about 500 people. And the proverbial poo-poo hit the fan in there. I mean, the place split in half. Half of the people there thought this was a very bad idea to celebrate the cause of, of people that had been incarcerated. And the other thought this was genius for two reasons, to help them get employed, and secondly, to, to raise the debate, because many Canadians viscerally have a problem with incarceration for long periods of time. We know intuitively as Canadians this doesn't make sense. Okay, I want to go to people who have been incarcerated. Stephen, you're in our studio audience, and we want to thank Prison Fellowship for bringing me, because they work day in, day out, trying to help people get a second chance. Um, you've got a question for Kevin. I actually agree with what Kevin said about how system is broken, about how... We waste a lot of tax money towards uh, uh, serving these prisoners and their, their past. So we as a Prison Fellowship Canada and Prison Fellowship actually around the globe, we believe that uh, the actual transformation of people's lives start from within, from the heart out with the uh, help of God. And I'd like to know uh, what your uh, thoughts on that and the, uh, if there's any plans for uh, Redemption Inc. to include this type of interchange as part of your train series of business trainings. Wow, okay, there's the hot it's, seat it's for very, you. It's a very interesting question. You know, I, I think when you speak about individuals who have to go through the challenge of incarceration and what it does to their families and to them individually, everybody has to find the strength from within. And if they do that by finding God, that's good. If they do it through whatever religion they're involved in, that's important. My point is, I want to help them on the practical side. And for that, you need money, and you need to make the cause a national issue. And luckily, I have the platform of television to do that. If I can get millions of people focusing on this, this show can explore all different directions of how to solve this problem, because it's not just about throwing people in prison. It's about what we do to them while they're there. Because what troubles me is if you throw somebody that's 18 years old, at the prime of when they're going into society to become contributors, you taint that person's life forever if you don't do a good job in maintaining them and making them relevant when they get out. Okay, but Stephen's point is hard work and money and a gracious second chance from maybe something like you or some kind of employer, is it enough to redeem a person? It's better than nothing. That's my attitude. <laughs> okay. If I can get one person a job, a real job, and they become a taxpayer, 
I'm very happy about that. My goal is to get hundreds of thousands of them jobs by making this a cause. And I've said this every time I've been on television talking about the show like I am with you right now. I throw the gauntlet on the table. I say to any company, give these people a chance because you have no idea how hard they're going to work for you. They'll work 20% harder just to get the chance to work. That's the whole point. I don't see a lot of teenagers right now getting up at 6 in the morning on a Saturday. They're sleeping till noon. You, I'm, I'm telling you, an ex-con is running to get up on the morning, Sunday morning, too, and go to work. <laughs> you have a great new book out, Cold Hard Truth. I read it straight through, couldn't put it down. And you say that when you want to go to church, you go to an Anglican church. What are you looking for? Well, I was raised a Catholic. And in my time, it was in the 70s, and they spoke Latin there. So my cert to me, and I don't speak Latin, so this was in, uh, in Quebec, and I was very frustrated. I'd go to church and I'd listen to an hour and a half of, a, of a, a Roman Latin service. Now that's a little hardcore for me. I want to understand what the preacher's saying. So that's when I switched in that town, it's called Sanstead, Quebec, to the Anglican church. Met the pastor there, I got along with them very well, and I've never gone back. <laughs> All right, so Kevin, we're uh, asking if money and hard work isn't enough, it's mercy then, is it? I think so. You know, I, I think intuitively, and I say this to most people I talk to, in your own gut, you know, if someone has served their time, and there's many different crimes we're talking about here, but just intuitively, don't you feel, if, if you're just being a fair human being, that if, they've, if you put them in hell on earth, which is what prison is. I don't care if you're a man or a woman, and I've been there, I can see it. Isn't it right to give them a second chance when it's over? In my mind, viscerally and in my gut, I think I'm doing the right thing. And my guess is about 80% of Canadians agree with me. They just didn't know we had the problem. And then I layer on top of that the billions of dollars that it costs you and me in this insane process with, with no ending. I mean, it, like, I have to ask the government, what are you doing? You think throwing people in jail longer is actually going to fix anything? Most societies around the world have discovered it doesn't work. So why are we, as Canadians, going down this path? We're the more forgiving people on Earth. This makes no sense to me whatsoever. Kevin O'Leary, thank you very much. Redemption, Inc., Monday nights on CBC. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And now we want to know what you think. Does the word redemption have a spiritual meaning for you? Send us your answers by phone or email. Give us a Facebook or Twitter on it. We'd love to know what you think of this conversation. So our studio audience is taking a live vote, and we'll have those results just after the break. We want you to be a part of our studio audience. If you're in the Toronto area, contact us. Today's audience members will receive a complimentary book from the Faith Family Books and Gift Store. For your chance to get a free book, send us your feedback on today's show. Call our viewer feedback line, send us an email, or leave a video message. We're on Facebook and Twitter at Context TV. Before the break, we asked our studio audience, does the word redemption have a spiritual meaning for you? And here's how they voted. 86% said yes, 14% said no. And I'm going to close with Maxwell Beach on his opinion on that. He's back to share some closing remarks. Maxwell, you are the prisoner who, the ex-con, yeah. who lived the Redemption Inc. dream. You got an incredible break of mercy, judge yes. giving you 90 day served on weekends time. You started your own business, Blinds and Home Security. You're doing well. You're looking after your son. Is hard work, money, and some grace from the court system enough to turn your life around and keep you straight? I can only speak from my personal experience and I would have to say definitely not. If I had not surrendered my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I would be a lost soul. Undoubtedly, there's not even a shadow of a doubt in my mind. I'm a Proverbs man and in the book of Proverbs it says that there's a way that seems right to a man and going down that path it's you, a dead end. You so need God to keep you good? Absolutely. There's not, when I say I am so confident, I would bet everything I own. There is no other way. Are you happy? Oh my goodness, I am so happy. I'm at peace. 
I'm at peace. All right. Maxwell Beach, I'm going to ask you to write on our blog this week on what you think on the government's get tough on crime and don't give people a minimum chance, but a mandatory sentence and um, a little bit more on your journey to God. Thank you very much sure. for being with Thanks Context. Thanks for having me. It's great. Thank you. Well, for your chance to receive a free book, like our studio audience, send us your feedback on today's show and call the viewer feedback line. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Lorna Duick. Thanks for watching Context and join us next week as we explore life beyond the headlines. Thank you.